We are starting the show with our morning view with the lovely uh, Nick Ferrari and the gorgeous Sonia Soda. Good morning to Good morning. Good morning. You. Good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Nick. Lovely to see you. Let's start. The, the, the headline really is uh, the reaction to the new hate crime and public order in Scotland Act uh, 2021. Great new crime of stirring up hatred relating to age, disability, religion, sexual orientation, transgender identity or being intersex. Uh, J.K. Rowling uh, has taken to Twitter, uh, challenging police to arrest her uh, in a social media post, criticising the New York's. Uh, she insisted that legislation is wide open to abuse by activists who wish to silence those speaking out about the dangers of eliminating women and girls' single-sex spaces. Nick, we'll start with you. Can you give us a little bit of the background and, and where this is likely to go? Where this is likely to go is to cause one heck of a row. Yes, of course, here is the background. So this is uh, solely for Scotland. Um, Dermot, it takes something to unite the Prime Minister and Peter Tatchell, that's a phenomenal and veteran uh, gay rights campaigner, and they have both come out against this new law, as have senior police officers themselves. What does it provide for? That anyone is found to be trying to stir up hatred against trans people could face arrest. Now, that seems to make sense. As Peter Tatchell points out, in the protected groups that are provided for by this legislation in Scotland, women do not feature. So trans women do, trans men do. Women themselves are not provided for, which Mr Tatchell finds quite ex extraordinary. Now to the Prime Minister. He says that this is effectively an attack on free speech because should, people should be allowed to say what they want to as long as it's not causing to specific harm. This law would actually provide for if you were to make a comment that could be seen to be derogatory about trans people in the privacy of your own home, you could face arrest, you could face a jail term. And the other thing that's concerning people is that these claims can be made at special hubs, as they're called. Well, if you go back to the days of the Salem witch trials, if you decided that someone was a witch and you told the local community that then that person was effectively dragged off. That is what's concerning them. As I said at the top, if you manage to combine the Prime Minister, Peter Tatchell and a number of senior police chiefs, I will question the validity of the law. Uh, Sonia, what about you? I mean, subjectivity must be the, the hardest thing. Here. Absolutely. Well, there are some really loose definitions in this Act. I actually completely agree with J.K. Rowling that it will be open to abuse. So, um, for a while, there's been an offence since the 1980s in relation to stirring up hatred in relation to race. There are very good reasons for that. It's because of the level of political far-right organisation, uh, political parties uh, being racist, and um, legislators felt they needed a law to clamp down on mm -hmm. that. Now, in taking that quite specific law and extending it very broadly to a whole range of categories, including things that are subject of intense democratic debate, which is, as we all know, the debate about gender and sex and the relative importance of gender identity and sex. It's a very controversial issue in society. By creating a law around hate crime in that controversial area, you stand at risk of people saying very moderate, legitimate things, things like, you know, sex is real, I don't believe people can change sex, I believe that female sport should be for females only. You, you stand a, at risk of other people accusing them of stirring up hatred on the basis of transgender identity. That will have a massive chilling impact on freedom of speech. And there's a couple of extra things to say. The first is that the police have been very bad at um, understanding free speech, democratic free speech in this country. So having courts... a bit of common sense, maybe. Yeah, exactly. So the courts have found that the police have relate... acted unlawfully in relation to the debate on gender and sex. They've basically given people warnings for saying things that are entirely lawful online. Really, really worrying. The other thing is that we've had a few court cases now where judges have said they've observed that activists in this debate particularly those who think that gender identity can replace sex altogether, they accuse people of being hateful when they're not. And we've had a, a few important court judgments where judges have observed that. So we know there's a lot of bad faith kind of name-calling, um, saying you're hateful, you can't say that in this debate. So the danger is, is you get to a situation where something that's a really legitimate debate in society, which is, you know, we need to protect the dignity and rights of trans people, we but do. we also need to protect single-sex spaces. Yeah. 
yeah. women and female-only sports. So that's a very sensitive issue. It's yeah. about conflicting rights. We need to be able to have an open conversation about that. The, the danger is this law makes it more difficult, um, not easier. And that's why JK Rowling, so she's done this thread where she set out some of, her, some of her views that some people would say are hateful. I think some of them are important views that need to be expressed. And she said, go on then, I dare you, arrest me. So she's sort of testing the law, as it were. And Nick, and I'd love to get your take on this, boss, on you. Are we not then beholden to a judge's interpretation of this law? Yeah, and prior to that, you're uh, at home to the police's interpretation of the law because, and, and I think Sonia's characterised it brilliantly, I don't think it's appropriate necessarily to go into some of the descriptions that J.K. Rowling has used about some of these people, although I totally support her point of view. It will become so subjective in that it has to be referred to the a police officer in the first place, it then goes to their equivalent of the Crown Prosecution Service where the charges will be referred, and then it goes before a judge, all because, as Sonia has so lucidly said, someone has a different point of view over something such as transport. I think we need to live in a country where as long as you put your views plainly, you don't use hateful language, you're not inciting any form of riot, and we do have the Public Order Act of 1986 that prohibits that anyway. We do not need this additional law. Sonia? Yeah, I would um, um, completely agree with that. And I think when it comes down to it, the police are very bad at understanding democratic rights to free expression, to protest. Actually, this is a government that get, has given the police way more powers to determine what protest is OK and what democratic protest isn't. Just, to, just by way of balance, that's, that's quite catch-all. All of the police? or is, I mean, I don't know how systemic... Well, it, in general, we know that they're, they're sort of bad at it. And, and the, the fact of the matter is, is we really shouldn't be getting the police... It, it shouldn't be their job. So, you know, we've, we've got really stretched police forces. They don't even come sometimes when you've been burgled at home. Why are we getting them to police the boundaries of legitimate debate online when they sometimes overstep the mark and give people warnings where they shouldn't be giving people warnings? So I think it's just about understanding what the job of the police should be. Well, I guess, be. Uh, by way of balance, they're, they're given an impossible job, aren't they, yeah, they've got the, I refer again, they've got the Public Order Act that states so simply anything that could cause some form of alarm, distress, distress of the public peace, that allows them to act. So, yes, to a point what Sonia just said, but if someone is sitting on a bus and they are subjected to vile comments because they happen to be trans or whatever, we want laws that allow for that. Absolutely. And that is what the Public Order Act does. We yeah. do not need this additional Scottish law. Yeah. And we've also got laws that say, um, and that's another thing that this Act does, that actually these the Scottish laws do that people don't have a problem with, which is if you commit a crime against someone and there is evidence that part of the motivation for a crime is hatred against them because they're gay or because they're trans or because of um, the colour of their skin, you will get a higher sentence for that. No-one's got a problem for that, it's about legitimate democratic debate. Mm. It is interesting that women are not on that. Though. Yes, absolutely, isn't it, isn't it, it is. Interesting? Absolutely. Well, I think it's really problematic that um, for when you commit a crime, um, if it relates to some of these protected characteristics, you know, um, these these categories, you um, will get a higher sentence. But for women, you don't. OK, let's move on to a new story uh, exploring the fact that there's new data out there. It's revealed that the NHS doctors waste a staggering 13.5 million hours a year rebooting computers and literally staring at loading screens. That's the equivalent of 8,000 full-time medics costing £1 billion. Pounds. Right. I mean, I've spent a few times yeah. looking at that little round thing Your that goes round. It's r the wheel of <laughs> doom. That's what it is. Uh, Nick, what do, you, what do you make of all this? Well, this is why I can't get an appointment of my doctor. Clearly, he or she is sitting in this damn circle going round and round. Look, we need to put it into a bit of context. Just imagine how many man or woman hours are spent working with the NHS and the number of patients' records that are trying to be accessed. But at the heart of it, this is something that needs to be done. It was only last week, remember, Alison, that we were talking about public satisfaction in the NHS, which is its lowest level for more than 40 years, principally about problems with A&E and GP waiting lists. I think this plays into this. We better say the government has promised that there will be a new investment. They talk of a £3.4 billion investment. It will focus on frontline computers. Um, it seems to me it's that... What's that catchphrase? Computer says no. It's just being <laughs> heard all too often. 
I mean, it's just a matter of time before we have a blackout, isn't it? Well, it, well the NHS has actually... Do you remember when there was a big kind of hack in I the NHS? I do remember that. Yeah, absolutely. So it has been a long-standing issue in the NHS. You've got these computers, like, running on technology and software from the 1990s and the early 2000s. Like, Microsoft doesn't even make updates for them anymore. And the issue is, is that we have underinvested in... Technology. IT yeah. and technology in the NHS. So that's true when it comes to things like, you know, the monitors that doctors and surgeons use. It's true when it comes to kind of quite basic IT, like communicating across departments in a hospital. And so it's not just about the money we're spending on the NHS year to year in the here and now. We're not spending enough there. Yeah. We're also not spending enough, and we haven't over the last, I would say, probably 20 years, we've not spent enough on um, the technology. That actually holds back the doctors and nurses yeah. that we've got. I mean, they have to waste all this time. So, so the, the one thing I will say, though, is that I don't know if you remember, under the Labour government, there was a big, you know, NHS IT projects have got a terrible reputation because the NHS is so big. When you're trying to redo the IT, you know, there was a project where billions and billions got spent, and, you know, it you know, it never quite materialises. So it is a huge thing. Like, how do you redo the IT for such it's like a big Painting the fourth bridge, isn't it? Like, when you get yeah. to the end of it, you probably You've need got to, to start go again. To yeah, start. exactly, yeah, exactly. That's such a good metaphor. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, uh, more from these guys in a second. Don't...